Hello everyone, James here and this week I'm coming at you with some more experimentations in Hue and I'm going to be using my Kuratake paints. This is one of the first times that I've used them, I've really only swatched. So this is kind of a bit of a review about what I think about the paints and also what's led me to making this series of portraits using limited colours. For today's video I'm going to be using lemon yellow and turquoise blue and it's a colour combination that I really love and really surprises me that I love because I don't often like green. Um, it's very rare that I use it and I will only use it if there are leaves in my paintings. And for the first time in ages, maybe even ever, um, I'm showing you how I build the portrait from scratch um, for the initial sketch, which is sometimes my favourite part and sometimes not. It depends how easily it comes together. You can see this guy came together quite easily, but I've been practising a lot this year with how to construct the head and I feel much more confident than I did a year ago. And this practising with a purpose, you know, not just repeatedly drawing and drawing and drawing, but drawing with a structure in mind and with rules in mind, it's helping me to become a lot more confident, which is quite a nice feeling because um, occasionally I feel a little bit stuck when I can't execute something the way I want to. And the only real way around that is to make sure that my skills are up to scratch and that I keep practicing those fundamentals so that they stay with me. So the nice thing about playing with the pink and purple in my last video is that it kind of led me to a series of exploring secondary color palettes using two primaries to create highlights and tonal values and play with hue in a way that helps me build form. And it's really been helping me paint with like real colors as well. You know what I mean by real colors. And also it's just a lot of fun. Um, you can be a lot more playful, I find. Well, I can, I can be a lot more playful with what I'm doing. Um, and I'm less restricted with myself because I'm, I'm not trying to recreate something that is real. I'm really only trying to create form. And when I do paint in those real colors, I feel that starts to translate a little bit. I'm becoming a little bit more loose with my painting. And it's kind of exciting, it's really exciting actually. So the next one will be um, reds into yellow, so they're for orange. Um, and I'm really, really, really looking forward to that one as well. I haven't quite chosen the colours yet, but I'm going to try and choose things that maybe wouldn't go together, or I might end up going for like a really classic colour combination. But either way, I want the orange to be vibrant, so both the red and the yellow need to be wanting to make an orange. Otherwise, it's just going to look dull when they're mixed together. But enough about the future, <laughs> why don't we talk about the painting at hand? I'm making this with Kuretake Gansai Tambi paints, and I've heard a lot about them on YouTube for being really amazing. And I have to say that I'm just not the biggest fan. I can really see some upside. The colours are really bright and they flow really nicely. You know, when I was putting down that initial wash for the base layer, there are no ring marks, there's no backgrounds or any of that kind of stuff going on. They sort of flood into each other seamlessly when they're put next to each other, which I find quite exciting. But they don't like being touched with water, like clean water, or fresh water to blend with. That tends to lift up the colours a bit, which was sort of a bit disappointing when I didn't really know how they would react. And I said earlier that this is the first painting I've made with them. And you don't really get a sense for it when you're just watching. So I was flying by the seat of my pants making this, just really reacting as quickly as I could to the behaviour of the paints. And it was a really unusual experience. They're just not really suitable for the way that I work, which is lots of layers, lots of build up, lots of washes and dragging. But on the other hand, the fact that they lift up was actually really helpful if I'd made a mistake. Now these paints use a really unique binder and there's tons of stuff in it, like animal hide glue, um, beeswax apparently, which I've never heard of being in a binder, nor animal hide glue to be fair. So I'm not really sure about how I feel about these paints anyway. I don't only go for vegan paints, um, but it is a bit of a selling point for me. I'm not vegan, I'm vegetarian. But, you know, I, I wish I'd done my research beforehand, I think. So <laughs> I feel a little bit silly. But anyway, aside from that, I think that the reason why um, 
I got blotches that I needed to remove and mistakes that I needed to correct in the layers was because of this binder, potentially. Something was making the pigment sort of clump together, creating like blotches in the washes. So yeah, the fact that they re-wet was really helpful because it meant that I could remove those very gently with some fresh water once completely dry, using some fresh water with some kitchen paper to remove those. So I guess that's a benefit, you know, blessing, curse kind of thing. The other thing that I really like about these, that I like about any watercolour that behaves this way, or is made this way rather, is that they are highly pigmented. You need very little to go a long way, but it does take a little bit to reactivate the paint. I'm used to, with some of my favourite paints, just popping my brush in and pulling out loads of pigment, whereas they had to be quite wet to activate in that way. So I was kind of picking up some colour every now and again, and then I'd put it down in my palette to mix with whatever I already had there, and I'd be like, where's all the colour? But, but when the colour is picked up, it's really amazing. And then one more thing that I didn't really like was the texture of the paints. So you could argue that it's because I'm using cold pressed paper, but other watercolour paints don't really behave in this way. And now I'm still undecided about whether I like it or not, but it just goes down on the paper quite grainy. And I want to experiment with it on some hot pressed paper to see if it does the same thing. So it was kind of giving me like an instant texture, which can be nice. And I was kind of enjoying in this painting, but if I wanted a really smooth finish, I kind of don't want that going on because I want crispness and clarity to my painting. Whereas I don't know if I'd get that from these paints. I wasn't getting it in this, but I also don't use color in this much of a heavy way either in my normal paintings. So, you know, we'll see with a little bit more experimentation and I do want to experiment with them more. I do want to play with them more, but I don't think they're going to be top of my reach for list, if you know what I mean. So I guess to sum up, they are bright, vibrant, highly pigmented, and I love them for that. But the lifting qualities that I think a lot of artists probably like them for, I don't. Um, I have kind of learned watercolours not to lift the colour off because so many brands watercolours don't really allow you to do it effectively without the use of a magic sponge or something. So either I was just not used to it, um, which is totally fair if if that's the case, but it still doesn't detract from the fact that they're not suitable for the way I paint, the way I've learned to paint. So yeah, good in many aspects, I guess in the important aspects for most people, it's that clarity of colour, like I said, but um, yeah, I know I said it before, but I just, I won't be picking them up regularly, I don't think, which is a shame because I was really excited to get them because I'd heard so many wonderful things about them and it sounds like I'm talking about someone I met at a party. I've heard so many wonderful things about you. But, <laughs> you know, it's true. I had heard a lot of really, really good things about them. And who knows, maybe one day I'll learn to love them. Before I go, I want to say a huge thank you to all of you for watching, subscribing and for making me want to make more content. I love you for it and mega thanks to my patrons for supporting me over there. I get to make even more in-depth tutorials for my patrons and I'm really, really, really loving it. Um, I think there's like three months of content over there now. And I now have two tiers as well, which um, I haven't said here. So it's not just the five pound tier anymore, there's a three pound tier. So if you wanna join, learn a little bit more about my process and learn from me as well, then head over to patreon.com forward slash nerd to pledge your support. All right, I'm gonna go. I hope I haven't offended anybody with my comments about these paints, but I'd love to discuss your thoughts in the comments below. So um, hit me up there and I'll speak to you next time. Bye.